This is a really weird microphone. Maybe weird is too strong a word. Maybe unique, interesting. It's called the Tula mic, and it's made by a company called Tula. And it's really interesting because, well, I mean, it's really interesting for a lot of reasons. But one of the main reasons this is interesting is because it has an audio recorder built right into it, which opens up a huge world of possibilities. So when I heard this microphone was coming my way, I decided, you know what? I'm going to spend the next 30 days with this microphone to really get to know it. So this is day one. But this presents me with a problem because I let my expectations for this microphone get a little out of hand. When I was researching it on their website, I heard about the uh, noise reduction or the noise uh, canceling that it has built in. And I had all these visions of being able to go to the beach or on an airplane, all these extreme environments, and I would be able to record this pristine audio. But unfortunately, that's not how the noise canceling works on this microphone. The noise canceling software is called Bruce Free, and it's made by a Swedish company called Clevgrand. I think I'm saying saying that correctly. And the plug-in version of their software does a really good job removing noise from the background. However, the version installed in the Tula mic is a much milder version, and that's simply because there's no controls to adjust it other than on and off. Tula said they would send me a dead cat as well, so I imagined I'd be going on all these adventures and uh, in all these uh, windy outdoor environments. Unfortunately, the dead cat doesn't cut down on wind that much. It does a little bit, but not a whole lot. Also, it changes the frequency response of the recording quite a bit. And I tried this microphone with a third-party dead cat as well, and uh, same thing. It doesn't cut down wind that much. I think this microphone is just really sensitive to wind. And now I've got this problem because I told Tula that I was going to do this vlog-style 30-day review, and... I, I know that was always going to be risky, but my plans for this microphone have fallen apart. By the way, Tula is not paying me to do this video. In fact, they said that if I fell in love with the mic, I could get a discount. No, I decided to do this 30-day adventure because I was really excited about the mic. And now I'm starting to think I lost my mind. Now, don't get me wrong. The Tula is a really unique mic. I mean, it's got a built-in recorder. It can be a USB microphone. It's got noise canceling. You can plug a lavalier microphone into it. I just need to reset my expectations and bring them in line with what the microphone is offering rather than the fantasy world that I'd concocted. So this is day seven. This is day eight. This is day nine. This is day 10. Hey, it's day 11, and I have some good news. I have found a dead cat. It's a third-party dead cat that fits over the top of the Tula and I think sounds better than the one that Tula supplied. Now, I'm indoors, and that's actually going to allow me to do a simulated wind noise test so we can hear how the microphone sounds with with no dead cat on it, and uh, also the Tula dead cat and this third party dead cat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wave the microphone around with and without the dead cats, and you can hear the wind noise that's generated from me moving the microphone. Okay, so here is the Tula with no dead cat on. Now here's the Tula with the Tula dead cat on, and I think you could probably hear the sound difference as well. It seems to cut down on the volume quite a bit, and it also seems to roll off the high end and the low end, which I thought was unusual. Anyway, here's how this dead cat protects against wind noise. Okay, here's that third party dead cat. And it does look a little bit like a mushroom. Uh, and the downside to this is that it covers the top half of the, uh, the buttons, so you can't access them. But uh, on the plus side, it seems to reduce the volume less, and also it, uh, I think the frequency response is, is better. And it seems to cut down wind noise more. So let's check that out. So what do you think? Are you hearing the same things I did? Okay, I know this is a little crazy, but I have found a way to put the Tula mic on a camera. I have a series of adapters, and I've turned it into an on-camera microphone. It's using the analog input to the camera, and uh, I've got the dead cat on it because it's kind of breezy today. I would not recommend doing it this way, uh, but you would look really stylish if you had this as your on-camera microphone. And this is day 12. This is Unlucky Day 13, and I have a conundrum now because I finished my main review of the Tula mic, and the question is, do I continue going? Because I have a big backlog of reviews I have to make and videos I want to get out, and I'm just starting to wonder why I'm doing this, and I really have to think through, what are my goals? Oh, and this is Day 14, I think.
<laughs> this is day 15. It is day 16. Good morning. It's day 17. This is day 18. In my original review of the Tula microphone, I used a noisy LED light because it had a noisy fan to demonstrate the noise canceling, but it wasn't really that dramatic because it wasn't a terribly noisy source. However, I'm going to try something new today and I'm going to turn on the, the hood fan for the, uh, for the range or the stove here and uh, let's hear how it sounds. And by the way, this is day 19. Okay, this is the Tula with no noise canceling. And now this is the Tula with noise canceling. Are we recording? I used to work in this building behind me about a decade ago when I was still in the music business. And I was dropping my son and his friends off at Magic Mountain. It's a Sunday. I thought I'd just stop by the building. I can't tell if it's the same company or not. There's no signs on the outside. There seems to be furniture inside. So I don't know. I just thought I'd go down memory lane, but I'm not sure what the memory is here. And uh, this is day 20. When I used to work for this company, every year we would go to the NAM show, which is the National Association of Music Merchants. It's a convention, it's a conference, and I hated it. It was four grueling days of standing in a booth talking to people, plus the setup, plus the teardown days, and I really despised going. And this year I'm going voluntarily. And I'm going voluntarily on my own because I have relationships with audio manufacturers. I want to create new relationships. And it just got me thinking about the old days. And uh, I think that's why I stopped by. Oh, by the way, this is day 21. Are you doing something? We haven't begun recording yet, Dad. Okay. I'm just getting you uh, using the microphone there. Yeah. You really like this microphone, don't you? Oh, I'm reviewing it. Oh, yeah. It's good. All right. I think it's day 23, and the wind is blowing pretty hard, so hopefully my audio is not trashed, even with the uh, dead cat here. But carrying around a microphone for almost a month now has been an interesting experience. It's forced me to come up with new locations and new ways to sort of portray the mic, and it's almost like having a little, like a little diary or Let's face it, this is, a, this is kind of like vlogging. I guess it is vlogging, but that's, that's almost a dirty word. This is day 24. This is day 25. This is day 26. This is day 27. There is one feature of the Tula mic that I haven't actually tested, and that is the lavalier input. Now, I did in my review, I tested the interview mode, which is where you plug a lavalier mic in, and uh, you have two input sources. You've got the lavalier, and you've got the Tula microphone itself. But I've never just used the lavalier microphone input overriding the Tula microphone. So that's what I'm doing now. And I know this microphone here is confusing. That has nothing to do with what I'm recording right now. The Lavalier mic is right here, and the Tula mic is right here. You can maybe see the LED going there, and it seems to work just fine. Of course, it's going to sound a little different because it's a lavalier microphone, uh, but I figured I'd test it out. And by the way, this is day 28. This is day 29. You know, I learned two things while carrying this microphone around for a month. And the first one was to treat it for what it actually is. It's a quality microphone with a built-in recorder. Part of the problem was I am always so focused on video that I forgot that it is a microphone. And when it comes to recording audio, video is optional. And recording and filming every day was a challenge. It was a challenge to find new locations, new ways of showing the mic, new ways of showing me, uh, new ways of showing what the microphone can do. And so the second thing I learned was I kind of miss vlogging. You see, before I started making review videos and how-to content and things like that, when I got started, I 
kind of dreamed of being the next Casey Neistat, or at least the next Peter Lindgren. But I also figured out that nobody wanted to watch the vlogs I was making, at least not back then. So I started to change direction, but I always thought to myself, one day I'll go back to vlogging at least partly. Because I really miss the creativity of pulling a story from the humdrum of everyday life. And making this video reminded me of that experience. So maybe I'll make another vlog someday. Oh, by the way, this is day 30.